A book today in the Tom Hartman Book Club is Richard Wolff's Understanding Socialism. This is from the introduction. Socialism is a kind of yearning for a better life than what capitalism permits for most people. Socialist yearnings are as old as capitalism them itself because they are its products. Where and when capitalism's problems and failings have accumulated criticism and critics, socialist voices have arisen. And so it is again now. Any serious discussion of socialism must begin by acknowledging socialism's rich diversity. Whatever particular aspect of socialism we choose to analyze, they need to be located within socialism's complexity. That avoids presenting one's own interpretation as if it were the entirety of socialism. In this book, I focus on the economic aspects of socialism, how it differs from capitalism in broad outlines. I'm more interested in socialist critiques of capitalism and their implications about socialist alternatives than in the particulars of the few early experiments in erecting socialist systems, USSR, People's Republic of China, and so on, that history so far offers. Finally, my own education and work constrain me to concentrate on Western Europe and North America. Some important aspects of socialism are thus not covered or discussed here. Yearnings for better lives, such as socialism proposes, are not new. In slave societies, the slaves hoped and dreamed of lives less hard and less out of their own control. Their yearning aimed to obtain freedom. They sought social change that would preclude any one person being the property of another. In feudal societies, the serfs, free in the sense that no one owned them, yearned for better lives too. Their subordination to lords included heavy labor and other burdens that they wanted lifted. They hoped and dreamed of a society in which they would not be bound to the land, the lord of that land, and the feudal dues of labor and subservience. The serfs, mobilized in the 1789 French Revolution to demand liberty, equality, and brotherhood, in effect, the serfs had expanded on what the slaves had called freedom. In the American Revolution against British King George III, the revolutionaries were neither slaves nor serfs. They were mostly self-employed farmers, craftspeople, and merchants subject to a foreign feudal kingdom. They wanted liberty as individuals to pursue their dreams without hindrance from feudalism or monarchism, whether foreign or domestic. They added democracy to the goals advanced by the slaves and serfs before them. The different systems of slavery, feudalism, and small-scale self-employment produce masses of people yearning for better lives. Eventually, each of those systems provoked revolutions. Many people then sought to break away from and go beyond those systems. The French and American revolutions marked key moments in the social transformations of major pre-capitalist systems into capitalist ones. By capitalist system, we mean that particular organization of production in which the basic human relation is employer-employee instead of master-slave, lord-serf, or individual self-employment. The revolutionaries who wanted and built capitalism hoped and believed the transition to employer-employee relations of, product, of production would bring with them the liberty, equality, brotherhood, and democracy they had yearned for. The revolution's leaders promised to themselves and to the people they led that those goals would be achieved. But the transition to capitalist employer-employee relations that increasingly replaced the previous slave, feudal, and self-employment relations of production had unintended consequences. Capitalism soon proved to be different from what its revolutionaries had hoped. While it enabled some people to be more free and more independent than slaves, serf, or self-employed subjects of monarchies had been, it also seriously limited freedom, independence, and democracy for many. Capitalism betrayed many of the promises made by its advocates. It produced and reproduced great inequalities of income and wealth. Poverty proved to be as endemic as capitalism seemed adequate, equally adept at producing and reproducing both wealth and poverty. The capitalist rich used their wealth to shape and control politics and culture. Democratic forms hid very undemocratic content. The cyclical instability attending capitalism constantly threatened and hurt large numbers of people, and so on. Growing numbers of employees within capitalism began to yearn for better lives. They defined those yearnings first in the familiar terms of the earlier, earlier French and American revolutions, equality, fraternity, liberty, and democracy. They criticized a capitalism that failed to deliver those to most people and demanded social changes to achieve them. Many people still continue to want a better, softer, friendlier capitalism, where government regulates and intervenes to achieve more of what the French and American revolutionaries had yearned for and promised. They are also often self-defined as socialists. 
However, capitalism's development provoked another different perspective that also called itself socialism. In that view, capitalism had not broken from slavery, feudalism, and monarchy nearly as much as its advocates had imagined. Slaves had master, slavery had masters slaves, feudalism had lords serfs, and monarchy had king subjects as their key sources of their inequalities, lack of freedom, oppressions, and conflicts. The employer-employee relation of production and capitalism generated parallel problems. Capitalism installed monarchies inside individual workplaces, even as monarchies outside workplaces were rejected. Kings mostly disappeared, but inside workplaces, the owners or their designated boards of directors assumed king-like powers. The book Understanding Socialism by Richard Wolff.